Ephesians chapter two, verse 10 says. It says, we are God's workmanship. That means we have a maker. We didn't make ourselves. We certainly didn't give ourselves our own life. It was God's doing. And look at what, how he said he made us. Created in Christ Jesus to do good works, to serve unselfishly, which he prepared in advance for you to do. This says you're born with this God-given purpose to serve, not just do something occasionally, but become who you are. And that's why I can say flat-footed, you're the most fulfilled when you're giving of yourself on a consistent basis. The reason is not because it sounds like a great Christian thing to do, the, the bigger, because that's just something I could make up, but the Bible says that you were made to do that. And when you walk in the calling, when you, when you walk in the lane that God made for you to walk in, you're fulfilling a greater purpose that's not just something that you just maybe show up in today, but it's what he made you to be all along. You're the most fulfilled when you do it. And everything for you to do that, everything for you to serve that way, the Bible says was prepared for you in advance. So not only does he give you the opportunities, but he gives you everything that you'll ever need to be able to serve in that way. And so I, I wanna tell you three basic principles that Jesus talked about when he talked about service. And then I wanna challenge you to make not just, you know, serving not just something that you do occasionally, but make it a value in your life. In Matthew 25, Jesus is, is telling the story. Uh, he taught a lot in something we call parables, which is a fictional story, but that has a, a real truth to it. And he would use this sort of as a parallel to life. And it, it begins, here's the three principles. It's the first principle is this. It's the principle of ownership. Say ownership. In Matthew 25, verse 14, he's talking about the kingdom of heaven and he's talking about, you know, this is kind of what it's like. And he says, it's gonna be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and he entrusted his property to them. Now he's saying there's this rich guy that's getting ready to go on a journey. The rich guy represents God, right? And then he says he calls all his servants together and entrusts to these servants his stuff to manage while he's gone. Those servants represent you uh, and me. And the principle of ownership, what is that? Well, whose stuff was it? It was the master's stuff. Was it the servant's stuff? No, it was the owner's stuff. And what is he saying there? Well, he's telling us the, the principle of ownership. Everything we have belongs to God. It's all his. We didn't come up with it. It's all his. In fact, Psalms 24 says that everything in the earth is the Lord's and all who live in it. That means not only is everything God's, but every person is his too. Everything belongs to God and he gives us these abilities, this money, he gives us time and resources for a few short years on earth, not to just you know see what we do with it, but to manage it well, to be a good steward of it and use it for him. Uh, Vance Havner, he's a, an old pastor, he said, I've never seen a hearse with a U-Haul behind it. You know, I, I, meaning that you can't take anything with you, it's not yours. It's, it's the Lord's, that's the principle of ownership. Second principle is the principle of allocation, meaning that God gives us some stuff. In verse 15, he says, the master, he gave one of his servants five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent, each according to his own ability. And our English word for talent, that's where it comes from this story right here. And back then it meant money, but it eventually came to mean anything that you can use to serve other people for God. And so this master, he's going away and he leaves some of his assets with his servants. And the one guy he gives five, one guy he gives two, another he gives one. And you know what, isn't that funny in the kingdom of God when, when we see other people with certain abilities and we see ours and we start comparing, right? And why didn't I get what they have? And why do I have what I have? And I wish I could sing like Pastor Terrell. He sings like an angel and I, I sing like one of the fallen angels that didn't quite make it, right? I, what, what, and we start comparing and you know, you don't have to worry about comparing because there's two things I want you to notice in this story, everybody got something and not everybody got the same thing. It's, it's not a matter of who was better. It's not a matter of, of who the master liked more. It's a, here, here's what it is. Everyone got something and nobody got nothing. It may look different than somebody else's. Your giftings, your resources, it may look different than somebody else's, but that's okay. You didn't get the same thing. But there's no such thing as somebody with nothing, and somebody needs to hear that today because you're thinking, I have nothing to offer the body of Christ. I have nothing to offer anybody else. And what God says is, I prepared in advance something for you to do, and I gave you the ability and the resources to be able to do it. You're just a manager of it here. Everybody has something. It's, it's the principle of allocation. What did Romans 12, six say? We each have been given different gifts. 
according to the grace given us. Everybody has been given something by God. Turn to two people and say, I have something. <laughs>